Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video today we're going to be going over the Stamina Templar build. Now this is a very easy to get build, doesn't take much work at all, and you can pretty much ride this thing all the way out to end game. Now, look at the stats, we have 17.4k HP and 34.2k max stamina with 1.1k uh, stamina recovery. Now it is good to mention that I am an Imperial. Now, they're not even top three in stamina classes, but a lot of times I like to make my characters for something that could be used in PvP as well, and I like Imperial in PvP. Um, due to the racial passives, you know, you get that max stamina, you get max health, you get deuce cost in your abilities by 3%, plus you gain your resource, you get sustain. So, I just kind of like it overall. But, when it comes to DPS min-maxing, your orc is going to be your number one, followed by your dark elf and Khajiit, or very close second and thirds and then after that your red guard your wood elf and imperial are all very close to one another so any of those work so anyways weapon damage unbuff 4.1k with 61 percent crit my spell resistance is 17k my physical resistance is 14.4 uh, the reason why i mentioned those is because i'll go over that in the champion points um 64 and 2 stamina food I'm using is Dubious Camorn, and the boon I'm running is the Shadow. Now, champion points. Let's go ahead and get to the, the red tree here. I have 31 in Ironclad, 44 in the Spell Shield, and 44 in the Medium Armor Focus. So you can, if you want to increase Ironclad, because what this does is reduce your damage taken against direct damage attacks, you can lower your Medium Armor Focus or Spell Shield if you want to, but because we're a stam character, we're not really using a shield, so the points that you would put to help with your shield, you can spread out a little more in these. We have 64 into Hardy, 64 Elemental Defender, and 23 into Quick Recovery, or if you just wanted to increase this a little bit, I think it's like 43, I think, will take you to 10% uh, healing received. We have 28 into Warlord, 21 into Sprinter, 18 into Bashing Focus, we have 64 Tenacity, 64 Mooncalf, 40 Shadow Ward, 35 Tumbling. Now, the reason why these are so high is because we want that... 75 points so we get that treasure hunter at all times you know pop a chest and find a better quality items i like it so nothing here 37 physical weapon expert 56 in master arms 40 thermometer 51 precise strike 22 piercing 64 mighty now starting out you you won't have the champion points like this so focus on mighty precise strikes and master at arms because the templar's jab is a direct damage attack, the last I checked. Now that may have changed with this latest update with Greymore, but I'm, I'm still pretty sure that Master at Arms affects that damage you put out from biting jabs. So, Master at Arms, uh, Mighty, Precise Strikes. But Mighty and Master at Arms first, and then as you get 160 and you start to get your crit, it starts to become more stable. Start focusing on increasing your critical damage. So, all right, sets. First five piece set we're running is New Moon Acolyte. This is a craftable set. We're running a Dagger Nern with a Poison Enchant, an Infused Axe with a Absorb Stamina Enchant, and then we have a Bow on our back bar infused with a Weapon Damage Enchant. Now, what this set does, it gives us Weapon Crit and Spell Crit, but, well, don't worry about Spell Crit. This is a Stamina character. So we get Weapon Crit, Weapon Damage, Physical Penetration, and we gain 470 Weapon and Spell Damage, but it does at the cost of 5%. Your abilities cost 5% more, so with the Imperial Passive, that's more like 2% more. So it's not a bad trade-off for everything this set is offering. So, monster set, the first monster set we're, I have here is Veldreth. Now this is more of a, I guess a medium. Cradle of Shadows can be kind of difficult starting out. You have Selene's that you can get from Selene's Web. It's a pretty easy dungeon to go through as well. And honestly, these two are definitely great to have. And then Krog's you get from Funko Grotto 1. It's probably the easiest set out of all of them. So, you get Krogs, you can go into Selene's, and then Veldreth. That would be the sets that I would work with. Or if you have some friends that can carry you through Cradle of Shadows, by all means, go ahead and go get your Veldreth. More power to you. Now, what Veldreth is going to do is going to give us weapon damage, and when you deal damage, you have a 20% chance to spawn three disease spores in front of you after one second that deal 13.8k disease damage to the first enemy that hit 
This effect can occur once every eight seconds. Selenius gives you max stamina, and when you when you deal melee damage, you have a 15% chance of calling Primal Spirit that mauls the closest enemy in front of you after 1.3 seconds for 17.1k physical damage. This effect can occur once every four seconds. And Krogs gives you physical penetration, and when you deal damage, you have a 10% chance of spawning drug gleams that create shockwaves in front of you, dealing 1.7k physical damage every 0.4 seconds for 1.2 seconds. This effect can occur once every three seconds. Honestly, Selene's is fun. I like Selene's. But Veldreth is also really nice, especially in, because this puts out three spores, so it's more of an AoE thing, where Selene's a single target. So, whichever one you like better. You'll get the similar DPS from both. And we're running New Moon on the chest as well, medium with divines. We're running uh, a 511 setup here. You can run a 6 1 where you're running 6 medium and 1 heavy, but I would definitely recommend at least running 6 1. I run 511. Mostly because I haven't gotten a medium shoulder in divines yet. So then we're running a new moon belt. And then finally a new moon legs uh, in divines as well with max stamina. Now, our second 5 piece set we're running is Leviathan. This comes from. Wait, no. Crypto Hearts. You can get it from Crypto Hearts 1 or Crypto Hearts 2. Crypto Hearts 1 is a very easy dungeon to get this out of. And this is basically just going to give us a ton of weapon crit. It's going to give us max stamina, weapon crit, weapon critical. Adds 1.8k weapon critical. This is basically uh, the Mother Sorrow set for stem users. So we're running boots and divines, gloves and divines, and then we're running. Three pieces of jewelry, all robust, all with weapon damage. So, Leviathan, Crypto Hearts, very easy dungeon to run even when you're 160. Even when you just hit 160. Shouldn't have any trouble running through that, so you should be able to get your purple jewelry pretty easily. And you can, once you get get you some divine body pieces here, get you somebody to craft your new moon, get crags, salines, whatever it may be, you can pretty much ride this up until you get your in game gear. You can get into trials with this, you can pull. Pretty good. You could pull solid DPS. You can also take this setup and run normal Maelstrom to get your Maelstrom bow. So that way you can have that on your back bar as well. And that will increase your damage even more. So. Skills. First set. Our spammable is Biting Jabs. We launch a relentless assault, striking enemies in front of you four times with your spear. The spear deals 4,000 physical damage to the closest enemy and 1.5k physical damage to all other enemies. Your strikes reduce the movement speed of the closest enemy by 40% for one second. Activating this ability grants you Major Savager, increasing your weapon critical rating by 2.1k for eight seconds. We don't really, that, that Major Savagery, we don't really have to worry about due to the last ability on our bar. And then we have Power of the Light. Summon an expanding beam of pure sunlight to doom an enemy, dealing 5.3k physical damage to them, and then copy all the damage taken from you for 6 seconds and releasing 20% of it as additional physical damage to them. Maximum copy damage, 20.5k. Targets are also afflicted with minor fracture and minor breach, reducing their physical and spell resistance by 1.3k for 9 seconds. These are pretty much the only abilities you're pretty much going to be using on your front bar. Now, you could be using Barb Trapped as well, which you... You set a sharpened bladed trap at your location, which takes 1.5 seconds to arm and lasts for one minute. When triggered, the trap deals 5.3k physical damage, an additional 18.5k physical damage over 18 seconds, and grants you minor force, increasing your critical damage by 10% for the duration. We're mainly running this for the minor force. That's why you want to keep that down. Critical damage is a must. You really need minor force on your setups. And especially with us having high crit, and the fact that we're running shadow, which increases our crit damage even more, Minor Force is really nice to keep up. So, Circle Protection. Uh, you're not really going to use this. This is just kind of here. I don't even bother to morph it. You can morph it for a heal or to fear enemies. But at 4,000 stamina, you're not really going to be using it. It's just there to get the passive from the fighter's yield. That's it. So you can, if you wanted to, you can switch this out for Vigor. Uh, you're going to lose a little bit in the weapon damage department. But it, you'll you'll have that heal in your front bar. The Camouflage Hunter, uh, again, this is here for the passive from Fighter's Guild as well. Plus, while it's slotted, it's going to give us Major Savagery, which we really ain't got to worry about, so you can take this off because we have Biting Jabs. But what this also does is that it gives us whenever you also gain Minor Berserk for 2 seconds after dealing critical damage from an enemy's flank, increasing your damage down by 8%. So, Minor Berserk, we're going to be dealing a lot of crit damage, so... 
we're gonna mine and berserk is pretty much gonna be up constantly. If you have someone in your party running combat prayer, you can put this on. You put silver leash on, which is from the fighters guild passive as well, uh, or the fighters guild abilities. That's the uh, the pool. Or you can just slot vigor on your front bar, or even repentance if you find yourself needing some more recovery. Because when repentance is on your bar, it's going to give you minor fortitude, minor endurance, and minor intellect, increasing your health, stamina, and magic recovery by 10%. And while um, concentrate the souls of the fallen, healing you and your allies for 3,000 health and restoring 3,000 stamina to you for each nearby corpse. So, the ultimate on our front bar is Flawless Stormbreaker. Uh, arm yourself with Meridia's Sacred Sword and dispense her retribution, dealing 13.3k physical damage to enemies in front of you and additional 15.4k physical damage over 6 seconds. After activating, your weapon damage is increased by, 3%, by 300 for 20 seconds. So, now, on our back bar, Arrow Barrage or Endless Hell. Endless Hell lasts for 11 seconds, where Arrow Barrage lasts for 10 seconds and it deals a little more damage. You can go with either morph. It's entirely up to you. Arrow Barrage it deals 1.8k physical damage to enemies in the target area every 1 second for 8 seconds after a 2 second delay. Ritual Retribution. Exalt. Exalt in the Sacred Light of, uh, of the Adrea, cleansing up to 2 harmful effects from yourself immediately while in the area you and the allies are healed for 2200 while enemies take 2.6k magic damage every 2 seconds for 12 seconds. Allies in the area can activate the Purify Synergy, cleansing all harmful effects from themselves and healing for 5.6k health. Scales with your highest offensive stat. This is just a nice big AoE. Everybody will take damage, plus an Arrow Barrage. It's just a nice little AoE thing. Barb Trap again on the back bar for passives. Repentance. Uh, I've already went over what Repentance does. If you wanted to, you can put this on the front bar and put Circle of Protection on your back bar. It's up to you on that. I have it on my back bar just because when the mobs are down I'll pop it uh, well after we start to clear a room in a dungeon or whatever I'll flish, switch to my back bar pop repentance regain all my stamina heal whatever I need and then back to the front bar to deal damage so blazing spear is here for the passives in our Adric spear ability we're never we're not going to use this now if you find you know the enemy needing shards by all means throw it to them give them some resources back but the reason why we have that on our back bar is due to this. With an Adric Spear ability slot, increase your crit damage by 10%. That's it. So if you don't have that on the back bar, you're gonna if you don't have that on your bow bar, you're gonna lose that extra 10% damage from your crit. Because we're wearing Leviathan, we have 60% crit. We want we want to be able to increase our crit damage even more. So that's why we have this on our back bar as well. If you don't have this on your back bar, you you could put Sun Shield if you want a shield. Anything from here. You know, biting jabs on your front bar, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. So, you can even put radial sweep on there if you wanted to. And then on the back bar, we have Ballista, so I'm going to turn to Unleash a Barrage of Arrows at an enemy dealing 60.5k physical damage over 5 seconds. This is very strong. Honest, for the most part, you're going to use Dawnbreaker, especially in big mobs. You're going to use this because that extra 300 weapon damage is amazing. But, I tried out something with a buddy of mine. He popped. He was a necromancer. Popped his Colossus. I used Ballista. We didn't use any other abilities, and this was in a vet dungeon. Between the Colossus and the Ballista, it pretty much burnt off 10% of the mob's HP by itself. Um, we were in Elden Hollow one, and it was the very first boss that we tried it on. So it wasn't like a really hard dungeon or anything. Elden Hollow one, we just we tried it out and it burnt quite a bit of HP off. So by all means you can start the fight with Ballista and then in the middle of the fight start using Dawnbreaker. That is how I would do, go about it. Now rotation wise, Templars are very easy with the rotation. So you're pretty much you're also gonna use you're gonna use your essence of weapon power pots. So what this is going to do, it's going to give us our Major Brutality, increasing our weapon damage by 20%. So, you know, you have Dubious there. If you don't have Dubious, Sticky Port ra and Radish Noodles. This will give you high, ma uh, high max health, high max stamp, but you get no recovery. And if you find yourself using Breath of Life or something like that, and you need more Magicka, you can use some Tri-Stat food. So, 
you know, of course you would pop your essence of weapon power pot if you wanted to. Or trash pots, you know, your trash stamp pots. Whatever. And then basically you're going to channel, endless hell, bar swap, purify, and just jab. You'll be able to get off about three jabs. And you'll bar swap again. And just repeat. And you're going to want to keep rearming trap up. And that's pretty much it. Of course, if you're behind the enemy, you'll do more damage because we'll get major battalion. As you can see, the numbers are going up. But that is pretty much it. The Templars have some of the easiest rotation. And they hit pretty hard while doing so. So ability, two, three abilities on the front bar, two, three abilities on the back bar, plus your ultimate on whichever one you use. That's it. That is really, that's as simple as I can make the Templar rotation, and it, it, it does great. And like I said, if you find yourself needing, um, if you're having trouble sustaining with New Moon Acolyte, I would personally put Restoring Focus on the back bar, put Repentance on your front bar, and just drop Circle of Protection. Because what this is going to do is that while standing in this, of course, it's going to increase your physical and spell resistance. You know, it goes up 24.9, 22.3. But while being in it, healing is, you increase your healing down by 8%. And then, let's see here. Uh, it's not going to say it. But okay, while standing in it, though, you're going to restore stamina every second. So you recover 240 stamina every one second. That's it. So that, that can help you with your sustain as well. So with that and repentance, you shouldn't have any trouble sustaining. So that is, um, there are other sets that you can use as well. But honestly, these two sets are very easy to get and they, they work great. So I hope you enjoy it. As always, if you do, don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the casual, easy-to-get builds coming up. So, as always, until the next video, take care.